Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my good friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. We've been creating podcasts for our listeners since 2009 and just surpassed a milestone of 700 free episodes. Before we get started today, we'd like to give a shout out to our new patrons, Melissa and Jennifer, for supporting our work on Patreon. You can become an Anxiety Slayer patron and unlock a community of support, guidance, and inner calm, plus more than 200 downloads. Join today at patreon.com slash anxiety slayer. This week is our final episode of the Restful Night series, where we've been blending ancient wisdom with modern insights to help you get a good night's rest. And today's conversation is all about sleeping soundly and quieting your mind so that you can get a good sleep. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shen. The sleep series has really been fun to record with you. I'm glad that we have been talking about more and more practices and ideas for better sleep. Yeah, me too. I hope it's been helpful for our listeners. It can take a while to figure out what's affecting our sleep, so I'm glad we've had a few discussions on this. And we know that anxiety and sleep can affect each other in what seems like a never-ending loop that's very challenging to live with. Anxiety makes the mind unsettled, which keeps us awake with our worries, our worries about today, tomorrow, next week, next year whatever you might have on the calendar coming up, whatever might be happening on the world stage. And this lack of sleep can increase anxiety big time. And that's where that loop comes in, that loop of sleeplessness and worry and what ifs that feel really hard to escape. Yeah. And the two sides of of a Vata coin, according to Ayurveda, India's ancient science of life, both of these things elevate Vata. And when vata is elevated, it can make us feel more anxious and it can affect our sleep. It's, so it's an escalating loop, you know, they're feeding into each other. And, and after a few nights of that, we can really feel that we start to dread bedtime and we anticipate an anxious, wakeful night. You know, we can wake up and think, oh, I had an awful night. I felt so worried. And then when nighttime comes around again, we can think, oh, no, <laughs> you know, I, I just dread that happening again. You know, I'm just going to go to bed and worry. And the anxiety can really, get to our mind in the evening. And that makes it all the more challenging to relax and to settle into good quality sleep. The more we worry about not being able to sleep, the less we're likely to get a good night's rest. So this week's really all about that, how to notice those patterns and change the way we're dealing with it and we're experiencing it so that we can break that loop and feel more peaceful. And that awareness, noticing patterns is everything. The mind often gets caught by anxiety in a particular place and common areas in the home where anxiety can break are in the bathroom and in the bedroom, mainly because they're quieter places. And when an unsettled mind is less distracted, it can easily intrude on our peace. Yeah, I've experienced this after a, sh- after a shock and I've also experienced it after a major surgery where I'd start to feel very anxious in the bathroom. And once it had happened a few times, as I went in the bathroom, my mind would flag it as an area where I was going to have that experience again. So my way of dealing with it was to use EFT tapping. As I went through the door, we'll share some different ways to do this, to to break that pattern. Sometimes we feel so helpless in the face of anxiety, but there's there's kind of an equation to it. There's cause and effect there that we can work with. And the way I like to think about it, if I've been struggling with an anxiety episode is, you know, if you've got one and one equals two, if you change one of those numbers, it changes the outcome. And we often forget that we can do that with our mind. We can change the equation. So it isn't going to equal the same thing. So it's not like every time I go in the bathroom, I just feel so anxious and it's getting worse. So now I go in the bathroom, I've changed the lighting, I've changed how it looks so it doesn't trigger my mind. I can make those changes. I can use different scents so we can make some some things different so it isn't such an obvious trigger. But really an easy way to do it is to use the quick anxiety stopper tapping to use that 
shortens tapping sequence to meet the anxiety head on and start to dissolve it. So it's really important to bring up. This is a common thing, but there are things we can do. And you mentioned the quick anxiety stopper. Do you want to just take a a minute to run through that? Yeah, you can find guided sessions on our Patreon. They're called SOS Tapping Sessions. Patreon slash Anxiety Slayer, they're there. A short one for about three minutes and a, and a longer one. But it's very easy. You just start tapping on the EFT tapping point directly under your eye, right in the center on the bony ridge under your eye. Tap there, either side, either hand, it doesn't matter. Just tap and start taking deep breaths. Then you pat with a cupped hand under your arm, about four inches down from the armpit. Again, either side, either hand. That's on the spleen meridian, and it stops the feeling of lightheadedness or feeling like you're going to faint. You know when anxiety really hits, you can feel quite jelly-legged with it, really shaky. That helps that, helps you feel more safe and grounded. You just pat there and take deep breaths. If you're feeling particularly anxious, put your arms up and ask a loved one to do it for you, to pat on both sides of your body. It's very helpful. Um, and the final one is the collarbone point, which we often share. It's on the, on the collarbone. If you just run your thumb into the dip where the collarbone, under the collarbone, just next to where it meets the sternum, the breastbone, that point's called A27, the kidney meridian, tapping there. Just bunch your fingers together and tap. You haven't got to be spot on it because it, the tapping resonates because it's in a bony area. Don't worry too much. Just get yourself roughly there and uh, tap and breathe. And that point alone can really bring anxiety down. So if you know there's an obvious trigger, a thought, a place, a time of day where you think, I always get anxious there, then we have this perpetuating fear of the fear. Try that. Try the quick anxiety stopper to dismantle it, to calm it. Noticing our patterns can also help us see that anxiety is temporary, that we aren't carrying it around all day. It's not there all day, though it might feel like it is. It also gives us information on areas where we can make changes and seek support. So whether that's through tapping, talking with a trusted friend, changing up your environment, being more mindful of some of the choices that you make that contribute to being more calm and relaxed. And it helps to adopt uh, an attitude of rising to anxiety when finding ways to calm it, stepping up to face it. We can't absolutely guarantee a good night's sleep, but we can be as relaxed as possible and in the best state to invite sleep and to invite relaxation. Yeah. I read a quote from Dr. Gladys McGarry, who's a 102-year-old doctor who wrote a book called The Well-Lived Life. I recommend the book. It was really positive. I enjoyed reading it. And as she's now very much in this vata stage of life, as we get older, we become more vata. As we just mentioned earlier, this body type from Ayurveda, our vata increases as we get older. Sometimes we have to adjust to the fact that the vata rises in the body and we sleep more lightly or we might not sleep the same as we used to when we were like in our 30s or 40s. And she has this beautiful approach that she says it's her creative time, not worrying time. She's a very positive woman, but she'll just get really relaxed. And she says she'll go over happy memories, journeys, or just think about wonderful things that she wants to do, ways that she wants to contribute. And she just gets as relaxed and happy and positive as possible. So she might not be asleep, but she's feeling rested. Yeah, spending time and sweet memories and things that bring her joy. Yeah, gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know this sends completely different chemicals into our body. So that's always something as well to think about is just inviting as much relaxation as possible without the hard expectation of black and white, I'm either asleep or I'm not. Um, we need to release the tension and the expectation and the frustration, the perception we have of not sleeping and, and what that brings to us. Because if you lay in bed and think, I can't sleep, and then your mind's running to wakeful, not helpful thoughts, you've got all those chemicals going into your body that don't serve you well. And then we're really not going to sleep. It just doesn't help us feel restful or relaxed. Well, then you just fall into that pattern, that never ending loop. We'll either get more anxious depending on our body type or we'll get more frustrated. 
This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are you making your self-care a non-negotiable priority? When your schedule is packed with work, school, or raising a family, it's easy to let your priorities slip. I know it has been like that for me in the past. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy or getting some exercise or eating well are more important than ever. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself and is such a gift to be heard by someone objective. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Slayer today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Slayer. Before the break, we were talking about the importance of noticing patterns to help you get a better night's rest. And now we're going to dig into acceptance and inviting rest. Yeah, as we were saying before the break, when we worry about not being able to sleep or we dread the coming night and start thinking about, you know, what we might experience that we so don't want, then we're suffering twice. We're suffering in anticipation and we're solidifying the problem. We're allowing the problem to really manifest strongly in our mind. And it's, it's natural that we do that. It's our default setting to do that. The mind unattended, it will just go there. We resist what we don't want to experience. We object to it. And that's the opposite to acceptance. And acceptance is such a peaceful state. It's such a conducive state to feeling relaxed and unsnagged by these experiences that we don't want to happen. When we need to sleep, we don't like feeling anxious and it's often worse at night. So we start anticipating that anxiety and, and we anticipate being stuck awake with it. And then we experience more anxiety and our mind becomes preoccupied with what we don't want. And it's understandable, but it doesn't help. And what does help is getting yourself set up to be as relaxed and calm and comfortable as possible. As we mentioned in the last few episodes, we really looked into how you can make your environment more calm and comfortable, how you can better look after yourself before bed and creating a good bedtime routine. And we're not telling you do all of this right now all at once, but start making these choices one by one and, and see how they support you. We've shared tips on breathing, oil massage, and guided relaxations in previous episodes in this series. And we really recommend giving those a try. In this episode, we want to dive more into the thoughts that can affect our sleep and what you can do to help with that. And one thing that really helps is writing. And there are different types of writing we can use to help clear our head and to help us sleep. And the first one is practical writing. If you're worried you might forget something tomorrow, Write it down, make a list and trust yourself that you have that waiting for you in the morning and keep it out for your bedroom. Don't have the list in the bedroom because the mind can be so sneakily generative that it'll want to add to it. But you can know that when you see that list in the morning, if there's something else that needs to go on it, it will spark your intelligence to add to it. So just write things out and then put them out of the room and out of your mind. And sometimes writing a, a brief brain dump of your day is also helpful and, and putting that aside. And it, basically you write this with the intention of clearing, not getting caught in the details. Yeah. Because we can do that as well. But I just love going over, okay, wow, look at what we've accomplished. What would I do differently? Move on. Yeah, because we can be hard on ourselves as well, and that can snag our mind at night time going over. Um, I find it really helpful, especially if I'm going through a flare-up with my health and I'm not able to do as much as I might like. I find it really helpful to prepare myself for bed, get settled, and then just say to myself, what am I glad I did today? And there's always a few things, even if they're not you know, big things, and I, I don't 
need big things. As I get older, I really realize the little things that, that mean so much for me. It might be that I took a salt bath. It might be that I cooked a healthy lunch. It might be that I did a breathing practice. It might be that I really tried to be present and peaceful with my meditation and I meditated early and I'm just grateful I did because I could feel how it helped my mind during the day. Little things um, so that we're knowing what helps us, but also not being hard on ourselves. And then we both have a gratitude practice. Yeah. And writing down what you're grateful for is a perfect way to finish your day. I don't always write down what I'm grateful for, but I absolutely think about what I'm grateful for every single night before I go to sleep and every morning when I wake up. It's become a part of who I am, and it's made all the difference. It makes a huge difference, and it's a, a powerful antidote to anxiety to be in gratitude. Uh, gratitude and acceptance are such wonderful states to, to cultivate. And sometimes, you know, we forget, we have to remind ourselves or reapply ourselves. But they're so helpful and so healthy. And the gift of curiosity, and it's, it's a potent antidote to anxiety, and it keeps us grounded and in the moment and grateful for what we've got. And if you love to write, make it a routine, make it a part of your evening to mm. have your, your favorite place to sit, your favorite chair. Maybe you have a warm drink, you have a nice diary or whatever it is you like to write in and set the intention that I'm going to leave my thoughts on the page before I go to bed. It becomes a, a ritual. It's a, a sacred practice for yourself to really be present with you and, and what's happened and what you're going to leave so that you can have a sweet rest. Yeah. And over time, these simple healing routines and rituals really support our nervous system. Now I'm spending more and more time alone in my life. I, I find that routines and rituals are so important to me. And I really love them and I love having the, the freedom to choose which ones I want to invest my time and attention in and uh, I can see how well they serve me. Ayurveda is very big on healing routines and rituals and of course the other thing we always mention and it's especially good for nighttime anxiety is tapping. We have a guided tapping session on our Patreon for releasing unwanted thoughts or worrisome thoughts at bedtime. We've shared the quick anxiety stopper how to do that, really recommend that. But if there's something specific on your mind, a specific worry, maybe it's an upcoming appointment or something that's happened recently that your mind just gets stuck on, we can get this really sticky mind when we're trying to sleep, we recommend using tapping for that. And it's as simple as if when you're doing your writing to clear your head, you do your brain dump and you write down what's been on your mind, what's you feel is, is kind of catching your attention in an unhelpful way. Take those words and use them with tapping. So you get the tapping diagram at anxietyslayer.com slash EFT, and you just start tapping on the first point on the side of your hand. And for example, you would say something like, even though I'm really worried about, say, for example, it's an upcoming appointment, even though I'm really worried about this, use your own words, I accept myself. And then you just start tapping through the points using those words, reminding yourself of that one thing that's on your mind. Just tap through the sequence and repeat for two or three minutes. Take some deep breaths and stretch, and you'll see that it comes down. It just moves further away from your mind, and you'll find that your mind isn't holding it. It's just not such a solid thing. And you can do that for as long as you feel comfortable, as long as you want to try it for until you feel ready for sleep. We've got loads of tapping sessions on our Patreon and and there's a few there that are specific to sleep, but it's also very easy to do for yourself with the diagram. So I think we've also got a lot of podcasts now with guided tapping sessions. So you can go back and listen to those, search our website, just type in tapping in the search box, and you can listen through and get a really good idea of what to do and just use your own words. Take your words from your brain dump and use those. That's perfect. It works so well. Yeah. And then finally, 
There are some bedtime supplement recommendations that we'd like to share with you. One is fairly new to us. It's uh, the Tanasi CBD plus CBDA, which is a wonderful supplement to help you relax before bed. It's also helpful for body pains, but I've used it now for over a month and love it and highly recommend it. And you can get 25% off with the coupon code SLAYER when you visit their website, which is tanasi.com, T-A-N-A-S-I.com. And also magnesium. Using magnesium before bed is incredibly helpful. Most of us are magnesium deficient. And if you've been listening to us for a while, you know that we're friends with Dr. Carolyn Dean and that she is the creator of a product called Remag. And Remag is a magnesium uh, that I've been taking now since, I don't know, it's got to be at least three or four years. And the last time I had my blood test, my magnesium is perfect. And it was very, very low uh, before then. And I've noticed I'm much more calm and relaxed. And it's been a really wonderful addition to my daily supplements. Yeah, we'll have the link in our show notes for Dr. Dean's Magnesium. And also, Shan, you interviewed her a couple of times. Um, yeah. And I remember one interview where she went in depth into magnesium and anxiety and shared that a lot of anxiety is escalated, if not caused by magnesium deficiency. So again, you can search our website. Um, I think if you just go on Google and type in anxiety slayer magnesium, it'll come up. But we'll have the link also in the show notes. Something important to take care of. The actual website for this remag that I'm talking about is rnareset.com. But the link that we'll have in our show notes will actually give you a discount off of your purchase. So if you want to look into using magnesium, using remag, uh, you can do that and save a little bit of money too. Thanks for listening. We are so glad that you come back every week to listen to our conversations and thank you for your beautiful feedback. We enjoyed creating this series for you and hope that it helps. And we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what works. Tell us what you've tried and, and how you're doing. And if you love our podcast, please consider exploring our Patreon. You can get loads of Anxiety Slayer extras for calming anxiety, including tapping sessions, popular episodes, and so much more. I've lost count at how many guided meditations we have there. You can check it all out at patreon.com slash anxietyslayer.